Hi, welcome to Stat Stuff. I'm Matt Hansen. This lesson is part of an extended series of lessons that cover the topic of building a measurement system analysis, or MSA, which is used to validate the reliability of our data. Specifically, this lesson will review the gauge R&R test used in MSA for analyzing discrete data. Please be sure to check out the prior lessons in the series about leading an MSA, but for now, let's review again the four general steps for building an MSA. The four general steps we're going to use for building the MSA begin with planning the MSA. That usually involves determining what needs to be measured, what MSA tools are going to be used during the MSA, and who's going to be part of the study itself, what samples or masters are we going to use for testing the accuracy, and how are we going to conduct the actual study itself. The next step is to actually conduct the MSA. That's going to involve scheduling the study, leading the study itself, and actually running it, and then collecting the data from the study. Once we've done that, then we can begin the third step of analyzing the results from that study. That's going to involve compiling all the data that was collected during the study, processing the data using the MSA tools that we plan to use ahead of time, and interpreting the results and doing the analysis on that data during the MSA. And then finally, after we've done that, we want to improve the measurement system. That's going to involve determining if we need to make improvements to the measurement system itself. If it does, then we need to find out what are those improvements and changes we need to make to the measurement system. And if we're making changes to the measurement system because we didn't trust reliability before and it failed the MSA, then that means we might have to redo the MSA. And when we redo it, that's a way for us to assess whether the corrections and changes we made to the measurement system were effective enough to the point where now we can trust the results coming out of the measurement system. Now let's dive into the third step and talk in more detail about how we'll analyze the results collected in an MSA. Well, in this third step of analyzing the data, what we want to start off doing is compiling all the data that we've collected during the analysis. So as each of those different trials of data are returned by each of the operators, we want to be sure that you clearly define what data is coming from which operator and store them correctly before you begin to compile them. And then once you've got all that data collected from all those operators for all those trials, then you can start to compile them together within one data sheet or worksheet. Now the method for compiling the data and how you're going to set up your data really depends on the type of tool that you're going to be using for doing the analysis. And again, that's going to be based off of the two types of data that you have that you're looking at. So if you're going to be processing the data now and working towards interpreting the analysis results, it's going to depend on the type of tool that you're using and that type of tool is going to depend on whether you have discrete data or continuous data. So again, if it's discrete data, we're going to be using the attribute ARR test, or if it's continuous data, you can use the gauge r and test. And for this particular study that we're looking at now in this video lesson, what we're going to look at is the gauge r and tool and how we can interpret the results from that. Now let's talk about the two different types of gauge r and tests and how to set them up in Minitab. Well, again, we're going to explore looking into the gauge r and tool or again looking at the variable r and tool. This particular MSA tool is analyzing continuous type of data. Now there are two types of gauge RNR studies that we're going to be looking at. The difference depends on the parts that are used within the MSA. Now there's a cross gauge RNR study that's used when you're using the same parts by each of those operators for each of the trials, similar to a blind study that's being used. However, if there are different parts that are being used and by each of those operators for each of those trials, then you're going to use the nested gauge RNR study. Neither of those studies really assesses accuracy like the attribute A and R, R test does. Uh, they're only going to be looking at precision, again, that repeatability or reproducibility within the analysis of the measurement system. Now, the example that we're going to go over is another example that's provided on our website that you can use in plugging into Minitab. Unfortunately, this is only available in the full version of Minitab. It's not something that's available in the student version of Minitab. So if you don't have that version, unfortunately, this is not going to help you with this. So what we're going to show, first of all, is the type of data that you would have that you set up in your worksheet in Minitab. It could look like this, similar to layouts we've used before, like for the attribute in our, our test. And it starts off with having a reference for each of the part numbers that are being evaluated. Then you have a master that's defined. And again, these column numbers, by the way, uh, the column titles that are on here are not exclusive. They could be any title that's used with the mini tab. These are just the column titles that's associated on here to make it easier to understand how to interpret where you're going to put these within the dialog boxes with the mini tab. So this master column represents your actual correct answer that you're expecting to get in the results. Next to that, you've got the answer, the actual one that's provided by each operator that you're actually going to be comparing. 
Next to that, you have a reference for who the operator is who gave you that answer that you're comparing to the master. And then finally, you have a reference for the actual trial number that's being used. Again, this isn't something that's required, but it might be something you want to reference for yourself as you compile your data and you want to keep your data separate as far as where the operators have provided the information among the different trials that were run. Now when you want to load the actual data and start to run this test with a mini tab, you go to the stat menu and then quality tools, gauge study. In this example, we'll use the gauge r, &R cro study crossed. Again, that's using the example as if it were the same parts that's being used by each operator. The output results look very similar to each other, so it doesn't matter necessarily that one is nested or one is crossed, but it just really matters that you select the right test for each one depending on how you set up your parts and how you actually conducted the MSA itself back here in step number two. So in this, when you select this option, the dialog box that pops up for Minitab looks like this. And again, for part numbers, in this example, it's the part num column that we're referencing. For operators, it's pretty straightforward. It's the operator. Now for measurement data, this is the data that's the output from those operators that you're going to select here. And by default, we're going to set this method of analysis as being the ANOVA. You click OK, and then we're going to look at next the output results and how you interpret those results. All right, now let's take a look at the two different types of output that are created when you run that test in Minitab. Now, when you run that gauge r, &R study within Minitab, it's going to give you two different types of, re of forms of output coming from Minitab. It's going to first give you a session window. This is going to be the descriptive display of the statistical results of the MSA, looking something like this. And it's also going to give you a visual output. It's going to be a graphs window. It's going to visually display the statistical results from the MSA. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take each of these and show you how you can interpret each one. We'll start with the session window, and then we're going to next go into how you can interpret the results from the graphs window. Now let's just focus on how to interpret the Minitab results that are displayed in the session window. So in this gauge r, &R analysis, what we're going to look at now are the descriptive display of the results that are showing up in Minitab's session window. So here's an example of what the session window would look like that's output from this particular study in the example that we provided. So what you're first going to look for is the p-value, similar to the p-value that we would use in many of the other studies that we've expressed with the Minitab when we're doing some statistical analysis. The p-value would represent the amount of risk that we're looking for uh, to see whether it's going to, we compare that to our, our alpha risk, which by default sometimes is going to be 5%. So here, if the p-value is less than 5%, that means there is a statistical difference. For the operator to have a 0.402% like we're seeing in here for this particular operator, that means that there's no statistical difference between the operators. We would also see that when we look at the next evaluation, which is the percent contribution. For percent contribution, that identifies what factors are contributing to any variation or that, that level of precision for the MSA itself. So in this particular example, what we're looking for is that the difference shows up in the parts themselves. So this is the scale that we might use. If it's less than 1%, then that's acceptable for any one of these. If it's anywhere from 1% to 10%, we just want to be careful. Maybe there's some variation or more variation than we would expect. If greater than 10%, there's something going on. There's too much variation uh, within this, so we need to go back and maybe make some fix. So in this example, all of these values, when we're looking at the total gauge R&R &R and the repeatability, reproducibility perspective, whether we break it down by operator and also operator and part number, in every instance here, this is less than 1%. But there, most of the variation is in part to part. Well, we already know that there's different parts that are actually supplied to these different operators. Now, we might have done multiple trials where it was the same part that was applied to each one that allowed us to use this particular crossed method for the gauge r, &R. But since we had different parts that were provided to each one, then that's where we're seeing all the variation. So this is actually the type of variation we would expect to see. We expect to see from part to part. So this would be acceptable to us in this case. Another thing that we'd look at as part of this output in the session window is the percent study variation and also the percent tolerance. This is ident identifying what percent of a certain type of variability is accounted for by a particular source. And what we're looking for is anything that's less than 10% we consider to be acceptable. Again, from 10 to 30%, though, it's within that, that range where we have to assess whether it's really acceptable or not. But anything greater than 30%, chances are it's not going to be considered acceptable. All of these, when we break it down for uh, the total gauge R&R as well as repeat 
repeatability and reproducibility and again by operator or operator times the part number and every instance here we're seeing it's less than 10 percent and because of that we consider that to be good all the variation that we're looking for is just within part to part which is what we'd expect again within this study so in this case I'm looking at these types of results from the session window this would mean we would pass the MSA from this particular perspective it would consider to be acceptable but next what we're going to look into is the actual visual outputs that are displayed in the graphs window from this particular analysis now let's change our focus by looking at how to interpret the Minitab results displayed in the Graphs window. So now we'll look at the Graphs window that's output from this particular test. And what we're going to look at is how do we're going to interpret the different results that are provided. So here's an example of what the total Graphs window might look like as a result of running this gauge or in our study. What we're going to pay most attention to are these two lower left charts that are on here rather than going to explaining all of these. We're going to focus primarily on these bottom two where this middle one here on the left hand side is really going to be showing us the difference in measuring stability as well as repeatability and the bottom most chart on the left here is comparing product versus measurement variation as well as reproducibility. So these are the four characteristics we're really going to look at and how we're going to interpret it from at least these two parts of this graphs window. So let's start with the first one where we're looking at stability and repeatability range chart. Now what this particular chart does is it identifies within operator variability it's re it reflects the variation that we might see between different measurements made by the same operator for the same part used by the same measurement tool or method. So when we see on the output window, we're going to explore that one section for that one chart. And what we're going to look for here is any data point that's outside of the red control limits, the red control limits that are down here at the bottom, so much like a control chart. If we see any data points outside those limits, it indicates some significant variation in that data point's measurement. So these are the ones where we might want to explore a little bit further or what contributes to the, the evaluations that we reviewed in the sessions window. Also, we want to compare the layout and shape of the data points between each of these uh, trials to observe any variation differences between the trials. So we're looking at by operator, here's each operator the first, second, and third operator that's being evaluated. And we're noticing that the shape of these, they look relatively the same. All of them are, most of them are within the control limits that are on here. So it looks to us that most of the variation is not restricted to uh, something that's within the process within each operator, but is what was previously noted in the sessions window, as well as you might see in this upper part of the graphs window, that most of it's going to be related to part to part. So this might be considered acceptable to us. Now the lower left chart that we're going to be exploring is looking again at the part versus measurement variation and reproducibility x-bar chart. So what does that do? Well, it identifies the measurement system variation as compared to part variation. It also identifies the difference between the average measures of different operators. So again, this is going to be exploring that bottom left chart. And looking at that, what we're going to look for is the data points should reflect the same pattern between the different operators. So again, there's the first operator next to the second operator and then finally the third operator that's listed here. And what we should be looking for is a very similar pattern between them. And we can see that if you just visually compare each one, there is a lot of similarity between the movement and the pattern and shape of the data points that are laid out between each of the different operators. And our goal is that we want to have at least 50% of the data points falling outside of the control limits that are on here, those red lines that are on here. And that would indicate to us randomness, and that's what we want to see. We want to see that randomness. And so that we, again, see that if we see at least 50% or more of the data points are falling outside of those control limits. All right, before we close this lesson, let's discuss how we can apply some of these concepts in a practical way. What I'd like you to do is to open up the sample file that was provided for doing this kind of analysis. And if you have Minitab, at least the full version, since this is where it could be run, try to run the gauge RNR analysis in Minitab as we've shown in this particular analysis. And when you do that, do you get the same results as we had shown in this particular lesson? Then what I'd like you to do is try to randomly select at least 10 of the different values in there that are in the answer column and try to change those values and see what results you get. So you rerun the analysis and compare the results to the last set of results that you had and see if you see any differences between them and how you might interpret those differences in light of the way that we had, had shown how you can interpret the session window contents as well as the graphs window contents. Well, that wraps up this lesson. Check out statstuff.com for many more resources that can help you achieve powerful results. I'm Matt Hansen. Thanks for watching.